It's a great privilege to present our <coughs> speaker, Mrs. Irina Nevzlin, the distinguished family, distinguished guest. It's a great privilege because I do have deep appreciation to Irina. She is a great lady, smart, does have experience and devoted to the Betat Futsot, a very important project. I don't want to take from your time, so you are kindly invited, please. Hello, everyone. Yep, let's try to. Turns out I'm much shorter than Amos. Okay, now. Hi, I'm honored to be here. After me, you'll hear from a distinguished panel about the relationship between Israel and the United States. So I'm going to talk to you about the relationship between Jews in both countries. I was thinking how we, how we can define what this relationship are going through. And I decided to look at it as a couple that is going through a crisis. So if a couple at some stage of their life is going through a crisis, there are three essential steps that are needed to make sure that they you know, overcome it. First, they need to realize that they are not victims of the situation. Second, they need to understand that they are stronger together. And third, they need to create a vision for the future. So let's take a closer look. So when a married couple decides to come to therapy, they first need to accept the fact that they're not victims. Many times you hear things like, well, I can't find a good job because we are moving around your job so much. And there's blaming and there's blaming. But if both sides keep blaming each other, they won't be able to have any relationships. We can see the similarities in the Jewish world. Israeli Jews are not the victims of the American Jews. And the American Jews are not the victims of the, Amer of the Israeli Jews. We need to stop the blame game and take responsibility because uniting around victimhood is not working anymore. I want to share with you some other example, examples of this uh, victimhood phenomenon which is currently happening in Israel and elsewhere. So Israeli left feels that they are victims of the right-wing government because it has been in power, and some say not so effectively, for 10 years. Israeli right feels itself a victim of the left because even though they are majority of the population, they still remain insignificant in the media. Women feel victims of the traditional world dominated by men. Men feel victims of the Me Too movement. Jews feel victims of Arabs, and Arabs feel victims of Jews. Elites feel that they are victims of the majority, of, this, of the stupidity of the majority. And the majority is absolutely convinced that they are the victims of the cynical elites. And this goes on and on. We can't deny the victimhood phenomenon. What we need to do is to stop, accept it, learn from it, and move on. Because when we choose to be victims, we automatically accept that we are helpless. And where does this path of victimhood and blaming take us? absolutely nowhere. We're wasting energy on staying in, in the same place and we are doing nothing to improve our lives. So this is my first suggestion for the couples therapy between Israeli Jews and American Jews. Let's stop being a victims. Now, staying together. Why should Jewish people stay together? I'll tell you why. Because for thousands of years, Jewish people were the most powerful network in the whole world. We not only thrived, we not only survived as a big family, we thrived as a big family. Being part of this global family is exactly what makes us stronger. Belonging makes us more open-minded, resilient, and ready for changes. So why fight if being together is what makes us stronger? And then we should have a clear picture, a clear vision of what we want from our future. Because unless the couple has the clear understanding of how their future look, uh, looks like, why would they try to solve this crisis in the first place? So I have a suggestion. Let's come together and create a uniting vision, a new long-term vision that will bring together Israel and the Jewish people around the world. You see, there was a picture there of a nice guy, good-looking guy, Theodor Herzl. Here he is. Uh, 
50 years before the establishment of the State of Israel, he wrote the book, my, one of my favorite book of all times, Medinata Yehudim. Medinata Yehudim was exactly that. It was a forward-looking vision that united then a majority of Jews. It's now time we create Herzl Volume 2. Herzl Volume 2 is a vision that should include both universal values as well as practical solutions. We need to decide which values are important for us today. Freedom, tolerance, unity. And what solutions do we have in the fields of education, economy, security, and healthcare? The world is changing very quickly, and many things from the past are not going to work anymore. Each of us should stop and think what he wants for himself, for the country, and for the Jewish people. Only then we can make this relationship work. So I go back to my formula. In order for the couple's therapy to be successful, we need to make sure three things happen. First, stop being victims. Second, realize we are stronger together. And third, create a vision for the future. Thank you.